On today's show, the San Diego Padres continue their winning ways, and Dylan Cease continues his wheeling and dealing ways as the Padres win the second game in this Brewers series. Talking about that, Hassan Kim home run, some troubling concerns yet again for Xander Bogarts, and Jake Cronworth, injured. Hopefully not too bad. We'll talk about all that and more, guys. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Lockdown Padres Podcast, which is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day for Wednesday, April 17th. As always, I am your host with sometimes occasionally and certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You may be familiar with my baseball-related work over at Just Baseball, where I not only write about the Padres, but also general baseball stuff. I wrote a little nice little tribute thing for Jerks and Profile, so you can check that out. And you can also check out my podcast, Baseball vs. the World, that just launched. That's about all the fun stuff about baseball culture. You can follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. And folks, another win for the Padres. We're going to be talking about that today. We're going to... It's been good vibes, quite simply... Not even quite simply. Ever since I did my rant episode, the vibes have been very good for this team. Um, and, and don't get me wrong... The the hatred last week mostly stemmed from just a frustration of this being very like, okay, this feels exactly like last year and nothing's changed to a degree. And I understand why people were getting frustrated, but it, it, it didn't mean I gave up on the team. I know that there's some people who are like, yep, we're not making the playoffs. This team stinks. And maybe that's just Padres Twitter. Maybe that's a bubble. But uh, this last week has been awesome. It really has been. And yet again, getting a nice victory over the Brewers, who longtime listeners know I'm not a fan of that franchise whatsoever. So we're going to talk about that. And we'll start with Dylan Cease. But I also firstly want to first mention, obviously, got to give a shout out to our homies over at FanDuel. Ladies and gentlemen, it's brought to you by FanDuel. Today's episode, make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 buckaroos, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And getting started with this, as always, we do the pitching matchup. Like I said, Dylan Cease, man. Dylan Cease. It's, how do I put this? This is like the best that a Padres acquisition outside Joe Musgrove when it comes to pitchers has looked when immediately getting here. Um, And I know that that's not necessarily like a giant bubble ever since I've been hosting this podcast anyway, but you know, they've, they've acquired guys like Mike Clevenger over the years. They've acquired guys like you Darvish over the years and Blake Snell over the years. And, you know, even some other uh, starting pitchers like Rich Hill and and what, what have you. Um, And it feels like cease has been immediately so great. One point i believe eight nine era on the season or i'm sorry 2.16 era he had a, a one before this in this game six innings one earned run on two hits five walks and seven strikeouts so the five walks not great obviously but this is sort of part of the course for cease and it is kind of uh, not not super surprising and in my opinion it's not the type of thing that you freak out with him because he's gonna have those starts but he's also gonna generate a lot of whiffs and he's gonna have those pitching ninja type of moments where he just he gets you strikeouts, right? And he does that in this game as well. 14 whiffs on the night on 38 total swings, five from his four-seam fastball, and seven from his slider. The slider is working big time today. And don't get me wrong, I guess the cynical approach I could have to this is just that the Brewers are a team that um, is just, they've slowly been losing stuff. They don't have Christian Yelich in their lineup right now. They're mostly counting on guys like Churio and Sal Frelick and um, what's that one guy, uh, Joey Weimer. Weimer, I think I forgot how you say his name, my apologies, um, to kind of step up for them a little bit and be the, the next young core for them. But even still, it's still impressive uh, by Dylan Cease, another good start. And he is Blake Snell in a lot of ways when it comes to some of the walks, some of the pitch count. He actually throws the most uh, pitches in any start that he'd thrown this year, 110. I was actually surprised that Mike Schilt kept him in for the sixth inning, but I'm all for it. I mean, he's very good, so that's really cool. But I'm a little bit surprised by that. But the five walks, don't worry about that because that's just what happens sometimes. Right. Like that's just what Cease is going to do. He's going to have some of those games where you're like, oh, wow, this is that's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? Um, But nonetheless, the Padres are able to give him some running support as well in this game. We're going to talk about it in a second, but also want to mention that four or less hits in every start so far for Dylan Cease, including that first one where he was a little bit underwhelming against the Giants. Um, And then also this is his third straight quality start. 
And I've also been told he's a Pokemon fan. So shouts to Dylan Cease, man. Shouts to Dylan Cease. Um, and even if it is a Brewers team, that's not super effective. This is a team that has been maddening for a lot of players and a lot of teams over the years because they just have a fundamentally sound core, right? Like they know how to play good defense, um, except for in Monday's game, right? Uh, they know how to play good defense. They know how to hit home runs. And they usually have awesome starting pitching. Freddie Peralta is like maybe even a Cy Young candidate this year for them, although he wasn't their pitcher today. So uh, the only thing with them, really good with runners in scoring positions. So I know that they had a good record heading into this series, but I really think a, a, a big part of that was that they were just hitting the crap out of the ball with runners on base. And I don't think that their roster showed that they should be performing at that high level. So they are having a regression and I'm more than happy for it to happen against the Padres because we need all we're, all the help we can get because this is a stacked division. I think the Diamondbacks are going to be turning it around soon. The Giants are weird, but I think that they can be good. I like what I've seen from Michael Conforto, my boy that I've been campaigning for for so long for some reason on this podcast, but still really good stuff from Dylan Cease in the Padres in total. Um, and another thing that happened to this game that's worth mentioning is Profar batted third uh, in this one, which is really fun. That's both a reflection of how good he's been. Um, as I've mentioned before, I don't think he's going to continue this. But what I do think is he's had such a hot start that I am kind of believing that he can do what he did a couple years ago for the Padres. The best season of his career who's worth about 2.5 F4, just to give you a number for it, and was just really solid, putting together good at-bats, not swinging at too many bad pitches, a modicum of power, occasionally, like, not great defense, but could throw some runners out every now and then when needed. And with Jose Azokar there, if you don't want Jerks and Profar on his defense there, you could just sub out and put in Jose Azokar. So I like what they're doing there. But they batted him third. Now, that's probably it's because of the emergency situation. That's a little bit too tough a word to say. But in terms of just... They had to have a replacement because Jake Cronenworth heading to the IL, or I'm sorry, not heading to the IL, not yet, uh, but he is injured with a calf issue, so we'll have to see how that goes. But uh, Profar batted third, and while he doesn't do too much in this game necessarily, uh, he just go one for three with a walk, and I just really appreciate this man so much. It's fantastic. Um, fun fact, um, since in terms of with the Padres, he's actually only played eight games in total uh, where he's batted third in the lineup. It was six in 2022 and then two games in 2021. So this is very rare. I don't think it's going to continue. The team called up Matthew Bat, and we'll talk about him a little bit later. But uh, still, just a nice thing to note. And I really like that he came through. And next, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about the the uh, the defense for sure. There was actually some weird miscues uh, in this game. But also, we're going to talk about the offense, how the Padres scored, what I saw, and got to give the flowers to Hassan Kim. We'll talk about that in just a second, guys. But before we do that, I need to talk to you about our good friends over at Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in the nation folks. Seriously, with more than 3 million members, it is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action. While you watch your favorite sports and players, you just pick more or less on two or more player stats and just watch those winnings roll in. You want to go and say hey, over on Xander Bogart's bases? I won't necessarily do that, but you can. And if you don't want to and you want to be a hater, you could go under. You could do that stuff too. What I really like about them, though, also, is they've got you covered when it comes to every sport and the NBA playoffs are starting now. By the time I am recording this, who was it that lost? The, the New Orleans Pelicans lost to the Los Angeles Lakers, which made me sad because I am sick of hearing about the Lakers. But... One big storyline about, story about that game was Zion Williamson got injured, apparently. I wasn't watching the game because I was watching the Padres because I'm a man, of, a man of the people and a man of my work. But when it comes to injury insurance stuff, they've got you covered. So, for example, I'm going to give you a baseball one. If one of your prize picks entries gets injured for baseball games, if you have a player who registers two plate appearances or less, uh, prize picks will have your back and not count it as a loss. So that's really, really cool. Quick through Charles, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. So go check it out. There's weekly promotions, special offers, all sorts of stuff over there. Download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Remember, just download the app Prize Picks, locked on MLB for your promo code, $100 deposit match. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. But folks, we're not done yet. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now, this didn't happen in this game. But you remember Friday when the Padres were down? And you're like, dang, this is this is really crappy. We've all been there. You know, maybe, you know, if you're a player, maybe, maybe you played on your little league teams or maybe your college teams or high school teams. When you're down, you're just a little, you're a little bummed out. What can I say? You're not sure 
if you or your team can pull out a win, that's when you dig deep and you say, let's say uh, time to get back in the game and let's pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friends' money as I possibly can. Of course, I'm just joking about the competition, but in all seriousness, you can get that with Monopoly Go, the smash hit mobile game. It lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to complete your progress, or I'm sorry, compare your progress uh, to your buddies. There's so much to do. There's also these like dynamic new Monopoly boards, which is really cool because I think Monopoly has had the same sort of look for a long time, don't get me wrong. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But in terms of just adding that fresh new twist to it, so you can check that out. Make your friends bankrupt. You could also smash their, their landmarks on the wrecking ball. Shout out Miley Cyrus. Uh, you could do that as well. Very, very entertaining and very disrespectful. Charge other players as rent for your iconic properties. If you want to get on those railroads and what have you, you can check that out. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests in in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb those leaderboards so get back out there put on your game face and download monopoly go now free on the app store or google play and just like that we're back ladies and gentlemen and hopefully hey listener the one who tweeted at me yesterday did you see me sip water that time you little jokester. Guess what? I hit it real good that time, hopefully. Uh, randomly, though, if you guys are annoyed by me drinking water during the break, if you want me to change it up just because it throws you off, I don't know. Just let me know. But anyway, continuing on with this game, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's talk a little bit about the offense today, uh, which is kind of the story of the game. Once again, the Padres jumping on the board early, by the way, which is really cool. It was very much in Padres fashion, but it wasn't as bad as Monday's game, where Monday's game, I really do believe, was just... The type of game where those are the games where the Padres used to be uh, on the opposite end of, where they're just not playing all that well um, in terms of like little miscues and finding new ways to lose and what have you. And this was one of those games that was like that, where it was like they didn't actually hit all that well, but the other team still won. And that happens to the Padres so much in 2023. This one, not quite as much as Monday's, because while, yes, it does have Manny Machado with the bases loaded, um, with one out, uh, ground out, allowing Xander Bogarts to score, like a fielder's choice situation going on here. But still, uh, Hassan Kim comes in here with a home run to give them the lead. And it, it felt like... Like, that was all they needed? It just felt so comfortable to just get out to a big start. And while they don't score again for another few innings, the final score is 6-3. to three. It was still really impressive. And Wade Miley uh, in this game, he's actually not that bad of a pitcher. He has a 5-point... Uh, he had a 2-point... Hold on. He had a 2.25 ERA, I think, heading into this game. Now he has a 5.14. He's quietly been, like, a decent starter for the past couple of years, by the way. 3.14 ERA last year, 3.16 the year before, 3.37 the year before that. Like, quietly been, like, a pretty effective guy. I actually was talking about in the offseason as, like, a potential guy to sign or even trade for because I just think that he's low-key just, like, like a cheap Jordan Montgomery type of vibe, I think, type of value you can get from Wade Miley. But he only goes three innings in this one, gives up four. And the Hassan Kim home run, one of the things about Hassan Kim that happened last year is that he was able to not just pull more balls, but turn his pulled balls into fly balls. And he was taking advantage, especially at Petco Field, uh, Petco Park. He just loves hitting to that left field wall, uh, the company sign and whatnot. Um, so he killed it there, and that's what he does in this one. It kind of like bounces off the foul pole. And if you're wondering, oh man, did we get a little bit lucky there? No, actually, according to Baseball Savant, it was hit, first of all, pretty hard. Um, 101.5 miles per hour off the bat and expected batting of expected batting average of 610, which is one of the highest averages of any ball put in play next to Jake Bowers is line out, which is the only thing that happened today. Padres got really lucky on a line out in this game, 930 expected batting average from Jake Bowers. But other than that, it was concluded by baseball savant 30 out of 30 ballparks. It would have been a home run. So this wasn't even a fluky one. This is the thing with Hassan Kim. He ta taps into his power well by pulling it. And that's one of the things that led him to be able to put a decent amount of home runs um, last season. And he's doing that again. I already talked about in this podcast that I'm not really worried about him. I think his defense has been great, um, or at least pretty good. He has made errors, but I don't think that his level of defense is declining. Uh, while Fernando Tatis Jr. has not been as good, according to expected um, sort of advanced stats in that department. He's been a little bit shaky in that regard. But Hassan Kim still love to see it. That I believe is his, let's see here, what home run is that for him? Is that his third or second? Is that his third or second? It is his third of the year, so that's really cool. Um, he also has four stolen bases, so he's kind of killing it if you got him in fantasy. 
slow start, but he's picking it up, and I'm not too worried about him. So shouts to Ha Sung Kim. Uh, basically being what felt like the game winner. I know it wasn't. Um, then Jake Bowers does get the double in the bottom of the first inning. Dylan Cease doesn't quite, you know, immediately strike. And it felt like, oh, no, I was actually texting my friend. And he's like, yeah, Cease, you know, come wipe him out. And then he gives up the run and he was a little bit frustrated. But nonetheless, the Padres end up taking control. Luis Campizano does get an RBI in this game. Jackson Merrill gets a uh, fielder's choice RBI, which is very nice. And with Jackson Merrill, I just love that no matter what, that guy's putting the ball in play. I do want to mention Luis Campizano, though. Like I said, he does get an RBI um, in this game. But um, how do I put this? How do I put this? He Very similar to Monday's game, it looks like it could have been caught by the outfielder. This one, this time he hits it to right field. It looks like, I think it was, was it Churi? I forgot who it was that was playing right field. Let me just check that for the Brewers really quickly. Um, for the Brewers in right field, it was... Who the heck was it? It was Churio. Oh, I thought he was a left fielder. Whatever. And it looked like he kind of stopped and he could have kept going to get the ball. So maybe a little bit lucky for Luis Cabizano on that hit. I can't really, um, you know, I don't want to like kill the guy and blame guys for balls that aren't, you know, smash all that well. But Luis Campizano. Oh, hold on. They actually, I think they called it a fielding error. Yeah, they did. I did not realize that they called it um, a fielding error because it just says that he had a single um, in this game. That's, that's very odd. How about that, folks? Maybe I wasn't paying attention. When I was watching the whole game, I guess I didn't re- realize. So Campizano getting a little bit lucky with his RBIs. I say all this to mention that he looks a little bit shaky as the play. I, I think he needs a little bit of a swing adjustment. I don't know in what sense, but it feels like he's, I don't know, like he's he's picking off of his foot the wrong way. It feels like he's trying to pull balls, but he's not actually doing it. Like it looks like he wants to, but he's just not able to do that with his swing right now. So he looks a little bit off. More importantly is that he's just way too aggressive. Um, I believe it was his second at bat in the game in which he swung at like three pitches that were outside the zone. He did foul them off. I have no doubt. I think his contact skills are very good, but he needs to draw some walks at some point. Uh, to be more effective, at least just a little bit. Again, he doesn't need to do much to be a plus offensive catcher because I think the average WRC plus last year, for example, for catchers was 89. And currently he's about like a 76, if I'm not mistaken. So that's not great, but he doesn't need to be that much better. For me, the bigger issue is the defense, and I don't know uh, how much better that's going to get. Uh, There was a couple pitches in this game, and I mentioned before that I kind of wouldn't mind if the Padres tried out Higashioka as the guy to catch for Dylan Cease because Dylan Cease is a pitcher who can occasionally lose a little bit of control. He does walk a lot of pitchers. He's not always the most efficient. So I kind of want to have a defensive stud there, but whatever you can't, you can't win them all ladies and gentlemen, but that's basically kind of it. There is another error. uh, I forgot to mention in this game uh, by Tatis uh, in which he just has a bobble that allows one of the runs to score. Um, uh, Willie Adamas, if I'm, I'm sorry, it was, yeah, it was, in the um, bottom of the seventh, and they mentioned it actually on the Padres broadcast. Good point from uh, from Mud, where he brought up like, yeah, like the third base coach was throwing up a stop sign, and Tatis. Maybe he's just been pressing. Maybe he's just trying to throw all these runners out. He threw one out yesterday against the Brewers. I think he's fine. I don't think anything's going to change here. Is it possible that Tatis isn't going to be platinum glove again? Sure, of course that can happen. Platinum gloves quite hard to earn, you know. So we'll see how that transpires, but just not great. Uh, from Tatis that he made that little bobble there. I think he's just pressing a little bit too much. And I think that defense, in fairness, is hard to analyze in the early going, um, particularly when it comes to some infielders and outfielders. I just think that you, you need a little bit more of a sample size. Uh, defense is a little bit hard to gauge with numbers and whatnot, so not too worried about that. Um, I do want to give a shout-out to the Padres' bullpen, once again being really solid, um, whether it be uh, guys like... Uh, Adrian Morajon, who comes in, he does give up a run, but I'm excited to see how he does on this team. He's basically been a a kind of a whiff by Preller when it came to international signings, but I do like the idea of him in the bullpen. We'll see. I want to give him another chance, at least as a bullpen guy. I think the days of him being a starter are over, but the fastball velo, that's what he's got. Not a great outing for him. He does give up three hits and one run. Yuki Matsui has to come in and has a long at bat and then gets a strikeout, uh, thankfully limiting the damage. Johnny Brito comes in this game, gives up another run. Yeah, I, I'm. it feels like we're running out of time with Johnny Brito. It feels like at some point they might come up and 
call up someone else to replace him, but we'll see. We'll see. I think that for whatever reason, the Padres believe in him. And then Wandy Peralta closes things out. So all in all, not that bad from the bullpen, even if it was, you know, not a shutout performance from them. The other thing that I want to mention, uh, two other things I want to mention, is that Manny Machado has been hitting quite well lately, folks. Don't call it a comeback. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you know. I mean, you know what I mean. Like he's it's it's been pretty good uh, over his last few games, specifically his last. Let's see here, his last uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, he's hitting. He's slashing currently. Over his, I can't get the number of plate appearances. Over his last 32 plate appearances, he's slashing 30, 367, 406 with a 600 slugging, 173 WRC+. Plus. He's good. Once again, has a solid game in this one, albeit nothing spectacular. He draws a walk, strikes out twice, but he does get an RBI single, which is cool. Um, Fernando Tatis Jr., he does go through for four with a walk and a stolen base, a solid game from Tatis. I already mentioned Profar, and that's basically it. Um, Jackson Merrill has a very quiet game by his standards as of late, but he does steal another base, which I love. I love the aggressiveness from Merrill. Just looks like a gamer out there. He just he doesn't look like meek or sheepish at all. The kid just looks ready. He's 20 years old, so that's impressive. So shouts to him. Uh, really good stuff from him. Eggy Rosario does get a hit in this one, which I appreciate. He's one for four. Um, yeah, I want to see more from Eggy Rosario, including every now and then. I wouldn't mind him hitting me against righties, but depending on what the Padres do with their roster, especially with the Jake Cronenworth injury, we'll have to see uh, what they do with that. Uh, last thing I want to mention is Xander Bogarts. Uh, once again, not very good. One for five in this game with the strikeout. He is really concerning, and I had tweeted this out um, on my personal Twitter account, which is that he's been really horrid to start out this year. I don't think there's any real misconceptions about that. I think every Padres fan has watched has been like, what's going on? Um, right now, Xander Bogarts has a WRC plus, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, of 69. Uh, from what I'm looking at right now, I don't know if it's been updated uh, over at Fangraphs, but that's really bad. And here's the thing. We don't really have any injuries to speak of, and that's one of the reasons I was defending him last year. And so far this year, not great. Not great. And it's really concerning. I think it should get better, but who boy. Ooh boy, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm realizing we're actually we're almost at the end of this podcast, so I just want to take another quick break, guys, and talk to you about our friends. Before we wind down and talk about the Cronenworth injury and then Matthew Batten and all that stuff, I want to talk about our friends over at FanDuel. They've been our one of our sponsors for a long time. You know why? Because they're the best in the game, folks. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. We got baseball in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on all sorts of games from every sport. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to runs scored to three pointers made to dunks, whatever. All on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for, folks? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Fanduel, America's number one sports book. And just like that, we are back. That was a tough transition on my part. Apologies, everybody. On the Lockdown Padres podcast. And as always, thank you for making us your first listen every day, free and available on all platforms. I want to quickly wind down and mention and wrap up my point on Xander Bogarts, which is that he has looked bad this year. He hasn't looked great at defense, but I'll give him a pass on the defense only because I think that's a management organization thing where it's just like, if you didn't know, until like right when spring training started that they were moving into second base. That's a communication thing. That's not great. I applaud that he's moving to second base, but in my opinion, that's like, come on, he's only ever played shortstop. So he's made some mistakes there, but I think he deserves a little bit of uh, slack on that, on that part. Um, and I do think that if maybe if he gets more reps there, I do think that he can get better at second base. I, I do. It's just that he's been playing it the whole time. But hard hit rate by season for Xander Bogarts. 2021, he was at 43%. 2022, which he was great and is the big six-win season that he had before getting paid. 39.5%, so he did decline a little bit there. Then 34.6% last year. And then this year, 24.6%. A 10% drop. Now, Obviously, I think that's way too much of a drop. Like, even if it was, you know, a player that's not particularly great, that's still a huge drop off in a very small sample size. So I don't think it'll stay that way. But let's say it takes the same drop as what it was last year, which is a 5% drop. 
that's still low and it's really concerning that'd be like a 29 percent uh sort of hard hit rate which is really bad for a guy that you signed to an 11 year contract so look with bogarts i don't know what has to change he's been so horrendous that i'm just my only defense for him is that Number one, he's not swinging at bad pitches. He's still getting wafts, and he's not whiffing at pitches. But my only defense for him would be just that it's early, and you've been so bad that I don't believe it. That's my theory on a lot of things. If if Manny Machado had a 47 WRC+, plus, I'd just be like, I kind of don't care about the data. Like, that's just not going to happen, right? But with Xander Bogarts, this is very quickly shifting into, like, an Anthony Rendon situation where you're just like, oh my God, like, is this like one of the biggest whiffs of any free agent in the league? And it's frustrating because, yeah, he had the wrist injury, I get it. Um, But last year, he still showed signs in the second half of the season, 138 WRC plus. So, like, not great. Not great for Xander Bogarts. And I'm wondering, is this one of those things where the Padres made a deep mistake? And if anyone roasts me for being excited about the signing, I want to repeat that episode that I did initially. I had no idea that he had this long-term not long term, but this wrist issue that had been a thing for a while. If I knew that, I, that would have changed my opinion. I, I don't want to say I would have hated the signing, but that would have changed my thoughts on it. Where you're like, wait, so this guy just has this wrist issue and you gave him 11 years? That's concerning because what if it just blows up? What if he gets hit by a Spencer Strider fastball? Like, it's it's really concerning. So, Xander, we need to see something. I like the guy. I like the personality. I think he's just a professional. Um, but he's been bad, and he's hurting the team right now. The only thing that's keeping him in the in the leadoff spot right now is the fact that he puts together a decent at bat in terms of walks and seeing pitches. So we'll see, though. Uh, but the last thing we got to talk about, guys, is Jake Cronenworth. It was announced that he was hurt and he was out of the lineup with a calf injury. The Padres announced also that they are recalling Matthew Batten, who, by the way, I just want to quickly touch on him, wasn't too bad last year. Uh, with the Padres. He actually wasn't too bad. He didn't grade anything spectacular or bad in terms of defense, and I don't think he necessarily has a, like a ton of power, but two home runs in 43 games, which shows, again, he doesn't have that, that much power, but what's big with him is walk and strikeout rates. Yes, 21.6% strikeout rate, and then yes, 12.2% walk rate. That's pretty good. All in all, a 106 WRC plus for him last year in those 43 games. Not too bad. Not too bad, if I if I do say so myself. And um, I will say, though, one problem is that it uh, has a little bit of an issue with the platoon as well. Same thing with Eggy Rosario. Now, it's not as extreme as our boy Eggy, but in terms of against lefties and righties, uh, he has a career. Let me see if I can pull this up really quickly and find it. His WRC plus against lefties in his career is 155, while against righties, it's 60. So I'm really curious to see what the Padres are doing here. I would have preferred calling up Grand Pauly. I've said this before. Grand Pauly, unlike these guys, does not have this platoon issue. He's hit against both uh, pitchers. I don't know what the team's doing. I'm going to be so annoyed, and I will complain even if we're good, if four months from now they call up Grand Pauly and he's pretty solid. Like Maybe he does what Matthew Batten's done, but he doesn't have this platoon split. Um, and I'll just be really frustrated because I'll be like, yeah, it's almost like this is always what he's done. And for some reason, you're giving Tyler Wade starts over him, right? Like you wasted all that time. So we'll see how it pans out. But um, with Jay Cronenworth, the good news, as also mentioned by Kevin Acey of the San Diego Union Tribune, is that there was no announcement of any IL stint. So hopefully he's back soon. Um, but take your time, Jake. We love you. You've had a mini, mini slump over the last like three games. Um, but we'll have to see how the leg injury uh, pans out, but it seems like a calf thing. In quotes from Mike Schilt, we're still in the process of figuring it out. Uh, he said before Tuesday's game, in quotes, it's in a unique spot because it's not necessarily the calf. It kind of leaks into the hamstring, which is a little bit worrisome. But the good news is he walked out with any without any real discomfort yesterday and pre- is presenting pretty well today, obviously getting treatment. Clearly we're mindful and hopeful it won't be a long-term situation, but we're still in the process of figuring it out. Um Again, we'll see what happens here. Them calling up Matthew Batten could just be a little bit of a precaution. It's good that we don't have an IL announcement yet. It's good that they didn't initially put him out there. But, you know, just hold your horses. You know what I'm saying? Don't, um, what's the word? Uh, don't, I don't know how to phrase this. Don't freak out and don't be super, like, expecting him to be in the lineup again. And that's fine. Uh, if he's only out for a few games, maybe you just rest him tomorrow and I, I, I'm almost sure that they'll do that. Um, And then you just have the day off, and then maybe he's ready for Friday series against the Blue Jays. We'll see. We'll see. But the big thing is 
don't want Cronenworth getting hurt in a serious way because he's been, in my opinion, the best player for the Padres this year. And then also you've got Jackson Merrill and Drixon Profar, which is hilarious. It's pro- Yeah, who has been the best player on the Padres this year? That's actually a good question now that I think about it. Honestly. Like, in terms of F4, it's Jackson Merrill right now. Then goes Hassan Kim, then goes Jerickson Profar, then goes Tatis, and then goes Cronenworth. But to me, the Cronenworth thing is more because of the position. He doesn't get value from the defense as much. But he's made some spectacular plays there, and he just has looked, frankly, just amazing to me. I really do think he's looked amazing. So hopefully it's not too long of an IL stint for him. I'm curious to see how they mix and match the lineups. Uh, because, like I said, both Eggy and Matthew Batten have had – have had. Ooh. Ooh, I'm talking too fast. I'm talking too fast. What can I say? I'm excited. Um, both Eggy and Matthew Batten have shown a little bit of an issue hitting against righties. So I'm curious to see how they do that, um, how they're going to balance all that. Um, we'll see. We'll see, ladies and gentlemen. But in terms of other storylines, that's basically about it for this game, folks. Um, really good stuff. We'll see if they get the sweep. Uh, they will be playing an afternoon game, which is good for your boy. He doesn't have to stay up late. Not that these games have been late, but it's just nice. It's just nice to know that we get some afternoon baseball uh, for your boy here on the East Coast. In terms of the future of this show, we are not going to be doing a Jackson Merrill thing this week. My buddy Arm, he's actually a little bit busy this weekend, uh, and this week, I should say. Uh, he's in Colorado doing some stuff, and so he's a little bit busy. And frankly, that's okay because I still got some plans. We're going to do a recap of today's game by the time you're listening to this, Wednesday's game. Going to do that for the Thursday episode as well as, I didn't have time, I want to talk a little bit about the Bally Sports report that came out from Awfully Announcing and what that could mean for the Padres going forward. Uh, n- spoiler alert. Your boy was right about what he said. They're going to be fine. But we're going to talk about that on Thursday. And then Friday, we're going to do a crossover with my bi- my guy, Tyson Shushkowitz. Uh, He is a writer over at Just Baseball Media and a bunch of other places, and he covers the Blue Jays. So we're going to talk about Blue Jays. We're going to preview that series. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've never had him on the show, but he's a really smart, awesome, awesome Blue Jays analyst. So that should be a lot of fun. I, I, fee- I give you guys the good food. What can I say? Uh, but with that all being said, everybody, that about does it for today's edition of Lockdown Padres Podcast, the only pod. That may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Follow me on Twitter. I've been weird with my words today. From like I said that weird. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J A V I I P E N O. Lockdown Padres on YouTube. Go check it out, guys. Go check it out. Until next time, stay safe and of course, stay faithful, my fire faithful homies. Take care.